Hi, I'm Megan, and I'm a feminist. <laughs> and this is what people think of when they think of feminists, isn't it? Just these hairy, nasty man-haters. And that's not fair, because I'm only a little bit hairy. <laughs> and you know, I don't hate men. I spend almost all of my time around them. By day, I work in finance. And by night, I do stand-up comedy. <laughs> Which means I'm constantly adrift in a sea of primarily white dudes. So I see some problematic things. Like the executive who, during a staff meeting one day, said, he was talking about his wife and three daughters, and he said, so there's plenty of drama in our house. What does that tell me that he thinks about me as a female employee? Or that same executive who loudly in the office one day said, isn't there a Hooters around here? <laughs> and then he looked at me, and I got, he must have seen disgust on my face because he immediately added, you yeah, know, for good wings. <laughs> or in comedy, it's always new guys and you guys. And there's a club in town that hires a position. It's partially compensated by stage time. Great gig. It's called Door Guy. No women have it. And each of these things is small, and it's minor, and it's easy to brush off. But this is what a microaggression is, right? And it's never about any single instance. It's about this constant flood, the storm, that tells me that you're lesser, unimportant, your experience doesn't matter. And when you start to see it, you feel like a fish that's become aware of water. And the question is, when do you decide to say something? And what I'm talking about isn't just about women. That's what I'm talking about, because it's my experience. That's what I know. But it applies to any marginalized group across any area of privilege. And I know I have quite a few. I know how white I am. Most of us are, <laughs> looking around this room. Um, and <clears throat> I know that nobody gets up in the morning, and they're like, hey, today I'm going to be a little bit misogynistic. <laughs> Today I want to cause some problems and make people feel excluded. And I generally think that people want to do better, and if they knew how, they would. Now I'm kind of regretting talking brain science because I'm not a scientist, but our brains are really lazy. They take all these shortcuts, and uh, they perpetuate the problems, the diversity problems that we have. One of the shortcuts is attribution substitution. It's where we reach for the easiest information we can find to fill in the blanks about someone. So when someone looks like you, you kind of fill in your own backstory. You're like, oh, I understand what you have going on. You're credible. I include you. I automatically like you. But when someone looks different, that's when you start relying on st stereotypes. You're just trying to figure out what that person is. And if you are an outsider walking into a homogenous group of people, you're in this very precarious balancing act where you're trying to, everything that you do has a bigger impression, as that whole group is trying to understand you. You're often the person who sees the problematic behaviors, and then you're expected to be the one to bring them up. If you do, what stereotype do you think that person's going to be thinking about you? You're going to be a problem solver, and you risk exclusion from the group. If it's professional, you risk actual job consequences. The other thing that often happens is you get called uh, by well-intentioned people is you get cast in the role of teacher. You're already in this balancing act and now you're expected to educate somebody. You have this extra burden. And these people don't often realize that your past experience with these conversations might be getting shouted down by facts. And so they don't understand the emotional labor that's involved, the burden that they're putting on you. Often the easiest thing for an outsider to do is just to shut up, just to go with the flow no matter how much it hurts and no matter how much it hurts the movement at large. And this is why we need allies. And this is what I want to talk to you about is if you have privilege in some area, you need to be talking to 
people with your same level of privilege, the people who are going to trust you, give you that automatic benefit of the doubt and the credibility, because there's less risk for you. The other thing that we need is people who can, if you get called out, listen, hear what that person is willing to tell you, apologize, and then go educate yourself. And this third thing is the biggest thing. Reduce the burden on outsiders to do the diversity work for you. Help them. So uh, I've compiled a list of resources. I've barely scratched the surface of this, but I'd love to talk to you guys outside at the table afterwards. So um, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.